So you've got times, right, Ingrid? Good morning. Welcome to Worship with Middle Spring Presbyterian Church. We begin our worship service by chiming ourselves in. I'm not on. Good morning. Welcome to worship with Middle Spring Presbyterian Church. We begin our worship this morning with our prelude. Let's use this time to quiet our hearts and minds in preparation for worship. The Lord be with you and also with you. Welcome to worship this morning with Middle Spring Presbyterian Church. Today is our celebration of Jesus' baptism and his baptism of the Lord Sunday. So today we will have a baptismal remembrance and we will also be gifted our shell words, we call them. So I invite you today for the baptismal remembrance to have a bowl of water, to have a writing implement, and if you did not have a chance uh, to print out the blank shell cards that were emailed home to you, or if you do not get our church email, uh, just have a piece of paper available to write your shell word on it after when, when we get to that part of the service. So, and if you don't get our church emails and you would like to, please call the church office and, or put in the comments that, uh, that you would like that, and we'll get that to you. Take a moment at this time to also... Share with someone the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, someone who needs, who you think needs to hear from you today. I'm sure they will appreciate hearing from you or share the peace with those who are you, whom, with whom you are gathered. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. I want to begin this morning not only with prayer for our worship, but also with prayer for our nation in acknowledging what has happened in our nation this week. And so let us enter into prayer. Almighty God, we come to you this morning with open and expectant hearts. We come to you this morning mourning what has happened in our nation this week. Lord, you have given us this good land as our heritage Enable us to always remember your generosity and to constantly do your will. Bless our land with honest industry, sound learning, and an honorable way of life. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance and every evil way. 
make us who come from many nations with many different languages a united people. Defend our liberties. Save us from violence within and from those who would call us to violence. Give those whom we have entrusted with the authority of government, the spirit of wisdom and humility and generosity. Give us all generous hearts and the will to persevere together. And in the prayer of former President Woodrow Wilson, bring us at last to the fair city of peace, whose foundations are justice, goodwill, and mercy, and whose builder and maker you are. And as we worship this morning, speak to us with grace and truth, and pour out your love upon us, so that in this temple may resound the joyful shouts of glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers, the Spirit bids us worship, and so we join together in the call to worship. In the beginning, God created the world, and God blessed it. It is good. In the beginning, God created light, and God blessed it. It is good. In the beginning, God created life, and God blessed it. It is good. Since the beginning, God has not stopped creating, calling us to closer to all that is good. And now we join together in our gathering hymn, Praise My Soul, the God of Heaven. Please stand in body or spirit to sing God's praise. Friends, hear these words from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. 
And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness God called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. In the beginning, the breath of God moved over the waters. In the beginning, the breath of a prophet called the people to repent, to be baptized, and prepare the way of the Lord. At this moment, we return to the water to confess our sin, giving thanks for the grace of Jesus Christ, the one who has come to save us. We pray together. God, whose spirit moved over the waters, you have washed us in your mercy, claimed us as your own, bound us in community, and called us to live lives of baptismal grace. Forgive us, O God, for we have not lived as if we are your humble baptized people. We stumble over opportunities for forgiveness. We prioritize our own selfish interests. We are slow to disrupt the status quo, even when it means ignoring our neighbor's suffering. Yet you forgive us, O oh God. By your forgiveness, renew us, strengthen us, and lead us back to your waters of transformation. Amen. Sisters and brothers, hear the good news. As people born of water and of the Spirit, we have died to the old life, and a new life has begun. God's grace is poured out upon us day by day. Come to the water. Remember your baptism. Be thankful and live as one who has been raised to new life. Let us trust that in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning, Luna and I talked about baptism a little bit, and we discussed especially the great prayer of thanksgiving that comes as part of baptism when we have baptisms in worship. So let's go see uh, what Luna and I spoke about this morning. Good morning, everyone. This morning we are celebrating baptism and remembering our baptisms, and you probably don't really remember your baptism if you were baptized as an infant, as a baby, but there are important things for us to know about our baptism. And one of those things is that at the beginning of the baptism that happens in church, and so when you were baptized, this happened, there is a big long prayer that we call Thanksgiving for baptism. It's when we say to God, God, thank you for this gift of baptism. And some people think of it as just that, just some big long prayer. Why do we have to say all those words? But those words are important. So in that prayer, what we do is we remember all of the ways that God has connected God's people through water. And so if you think about it, what we pray for in that prayer we pray for the, we give thanks for creation. And here's a picture of creation, of God creating the heavens and the earth. And in the beginning, we understand that God's voice moved over the water and made life. And our lives too, science tells us, comes from water. God created us, but we began in the water. The next thing we give thanks for in the baptismal prayer is for Noah having come through the flood waters. And so that's another way we are connected by water. The third thing we give thanks for is God using Moses to deliver the people from slavery in Egypt through water, through the waters of the river. And then the fourth thing that we give thanks for in the prayer of baptism is that Jesus himself was baptized. And you can see Jesus over here waiting to be baptized by John. 
So the big long prayer that we say during baptism is a way for us to remember how we are connected to all of those people who have come before us. They were not all baptized because baptism wasn't a thing then for God's people. But we have all come through water in some way or another, either through the waters of creation or the flood or uh, out of Egypt or through the waters of baptism. So it's a way for us to say, God, thank you for all the people that you have sent before us who have also been your people. At this time of our being baptized, help us to be your people also. That's why we have that big long prayer before baptism. So the next time we have a baptism, you can listen for all of those ways that we give thanks to God. And as today, as we remember our own baptisms, you can give thanks to God anew for claiming you as God's own child and for God saying to you in your baptism, I love you and you are mine. Let's pray. God, we give you thanks for your action and love in the lives of people since the very beginning. We are grateful to be included in the company of people who belong to you, to everyone. You love everyone, but not everyone chooses to belong to you. So thank you for giving us a spirit of wanting to be yours. Help our actions and our thoughts and our hearts to be yours every day. It's in Jesus name we pray, amen. Thank you for listening. In preparation for hearing God's word, let us pray. O oh God, send down your Holy Spirit, tear open the veil of heaven, and speak to us as beloved children, so that we may hear and believe the good news of your word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Our gospel lesson this morning is... Mark's account of the baptism of Jesus. So here now, Mark chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, and with you I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In a beginning, the breath of God moved over the waters, and life happened. In a beginning, Jesus came to the Jordan to fulfill God's righteousness, submitting humbly to a human baptism, and a dove appeared in the rendered heavens. In a beginning, tongues of fire alighted on, dis on Jesus' followers, and the breath of God enabled them to speak in other languages so that all heard the good news of Jesus Christ, giving birth to the church. In a beginning, joy-filled and awestruck parents brought you for baptism or perhaps with a wondering and rapidly beating heart, you presented yourself for baptism, and a spirit-empowered disciple was made. From creation to baptism to your baptism, there is one constant, God, 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And what we know about life in God, and especially life in Christ and in the Holy Spirit, is that it is not static. What's most important about the life in spirit is made apparent in the sparseness of this baptismal text from Mark. In Mark's gospel, we don't get any of the genealogies or birth stories. We jump right from the announcement of the good news into the way it began with Jesus' own baptism. Baptismal life is new life. It's lived in a new reality. At the moment of Jesus' baptism, we read, when he came up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending. This wasn't a reference to a weather phenomena. It was not a thunderstorm. The gospel writer is telling us that at that moment, Jesus witnessed a different reality, God's reality, the only true reality. And in that reality, Jesus is God's beloved Son, with whom God is well pleased. His earthly life, filled with suffering as it was, might not lead people to believe that Jesus is God's beloved. But at this moment, N.T. Wright says it this way, the curtain is drawn back, and we see, see and hear things as they really are. And we also are to remember, even when we look at the whole of Jesus' life, including his suffering and his death, that he is God's beloved. And even at this very moment of Jesus' baptism, he demonstrates aspects of what it is to live fully as God's beloved child. To live as God's beloved child is to live with humility. Jesus demonstrates that in submitting to a human baptism. Jesus demonstrates that in his incarnation. In the book of Philippians, we are told that Jesus emptied himself, taking on the form of a slave to live among us. Those who live with humility recognize that there is a larger purpose to their lives. Jesus recognized that his life was not his own, but that he was called, it to, called to use it toward the larger purpose of the redemption of God's people, of God's creation, all of creation. People who live with humility recognize not only to whom they owe their primary allegiance to God, they recognize themselves as God's beloved children, yes, but they also recognize others as God's beloved children. And I use that word others intentionally because we who live with humility are called to recognize especially those who are not like us, those with whom we disagree or maybe even believe to be our enemies. We are called to recognize them as God's beloved children. In this moment of his baptism, Jesus uses his power on behalf of others. And maybe right at this moment we don't recognize in the gospel what kind of power he has, but in mere moments in Mark's gospel, the Spirit will drive Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted. And one of those temptations that comes from Satan, as characterized in the gospel, is for Jesus to call down armies of angels on his behalf. But Jesus does not choose to use his power in that way. In submitting to a human baptism, Jesus seeks 
to ally himself with other frail and vulnerable human beings. He uses his power to build up and not tear down. He uses his power in this moment to become one of us and to seek the good of all people, even those people who will betray him or turn on him. He loves them all. You may be wondering this morning if I am going to address events of the week in more than prayer. I believe that our baptismal calling is a direct and forthright address on events of this week. Power was used not on behalf of others, but on behalf of one's own personal agenda. Humility was not demonstrated this week in our nation's capital. But there is one more aspect of our baptismal calling to which we must attend, every single one of us, not just those first two. Our baptismal calling also tells us that we need to be open to life lived in the Spirit, which is a life of being made new. And in John's words, it is a life of repentance a life of self-examination. It would be very easy, no matter which side of what happened in Washington, D.C. you are on, to put all the blame on someone else. But that is not our baptismal calling. Our baptismal calling is, yes, to hold people accountable when they misuse their power. But equally important, our baptismal calling invites us to self-examination, to ask the question as we mourn what happened, what was my role in this? How have I been part of the problem? Each of us needs to ask that really important question if we are to come together again as a nation. If you are spending all your time laying blame on someone else, or only listening to those who reiterate what you already think, you are not living into your baptismal calling. As we seek to be God's reformed and always reforming people, that includes the need for dialogue with the other whom we humbly acknowledge God loves, with the other who lives differently than we live but is necessary for our well-being. So as we live into our baptismal calling, let us live humbly, using our power to build up and also doing the work of repentance. This is really hard work, especially when it involves engaging other people in our repentance and having conversation with them. But we do not do it alone. Biblical scholar N.T. Wright again says that Jesus is the Messiah and the Messiah represents his people and what is true of him is true of them. And this is why we can understand that when Jesus rises out of the Jordan River and God says to him, you are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased, we too can hear those words in our own lives. And God's love is what empowers us for the difficult work of living as disciples in all aspects of our lives, not just in church, not just in our families, 
but also as political and social human beings. People who look at our lives of humility through earthly lenses may not think that we are God's beloved. They may perceive us to be weak or foolish, but we know better. We know that for that hard work, we are blessed. So let us look at the whole of Jesus' life and be shaped by his story into the people God wishes for us to be. In the baptized, spirit-filled life, there is no such thing as static or boring or bored. So may our prayer be that we are willing to catch hold of the fantail feathers of Holy Spirit and hang on for life. And this morning, as you experience the joy of remembering your baptism and receiving your shell gift word, may you also be open to the transforming grace of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. God, for your call on our lives, we are grateful. For your cleansing of us from sin, we are great, grateful. Open us to the continual movement of your Holy Spirit in our lives. Shape us into the people you wish us to be and help us cooperate in our own transformation. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Friends, as we remember our baptisms, let us return to the font of life. Today, it is our joy to reaffirm the covenant God makes with us when we are baptized. This is not a rebaptism. Baptism is once and done, but it's an opportunity for each of us to remember and reclaim all of the blessings we're given in baptism and to remember and recommit to our calling as Christ's disciples. In baptism, we are brought into covenant relationship with God and the family of the church. We are given the gift of the Holy Spirit. We are cleansed from sin and forgiven. We are given a purpose and a calling for life. So this morning, we remember these things and we recommit to living as God's forgiven, freed, spirit-empowered children. Hear now this call to discipleship from Paul's writing to the church in Romans chapter 12. Paul writes, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Now I invite you to join in the profession of faith, beginning by answering these questions. Do you know that you are loved completely by the one who fashioned you and abides with you still? I know and trust that I am God's beloved and that God is always near. Will you seek to examine the areas of your life most in need of transformation? And will you seek to change your ways of sin that separate you from the love of God? I will, I will with God's, God's help. help. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior? Will you give yourself over to his Holy Spirit for your walk of life? I, I do, do and I will, I will with God's, God's help. Will you recommit to the work of prayer, worship, study, repentance, and Christian fellowship necessary for growth in the Holy Spirit? I recommit myself to these disciplines. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and sharing his love to your life's end? I will with God's help. And now we join together with disciples of all ages who have professed their faith using the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, we are marked, claimed, cleansed, and called through the gift of baptism. In baptism, we are yours, O God. Your breath moved over chaos in the beginning. Your feet danced with Miriam at the edge of the sea. Your voice tore through the clouds at the River Jordan. Your heart broke on the cross when you poured out your life for us. Your hands caught fish for Easter breakfast on the shoreline. Your tears water your thirsty world as the rain. Your fingers mark our foreheads with abiding grace, perfect freedom, holy truth. Through the gift of baptism, we are yours, O God. You wash us with grace. You anoint us with promise. You feed us with mercy. You fill us with joy. Fruit of the earth, watered and fed, we remember. In baptism, we are risen to new life in Christ. Forgiven sinners, beloved children of the covenant, disciples with a holy calling. Through the gift of baptism, we are yours, O God. Thanks and praise to you, O holy triune God, today, tomorrow, and forever and ever. And all God's people say, Amen. Friends, here is where you will need your bowl of water. And if you have it, your shell card, or if not, just a piece of paper and something to write with. At this moment, were we together in worship, you would come forward and I have, would have one of my favorite opportunities and one of our ruling elders would also be participating in offering you a baptismal blessing. Today we do that together apart. We remember, though, who we are and whose we are. So I invite you, if you are with other people, you may bless one another. But in this moment, dip your fingers into your bowl of water. Make the sign of the cross on your forehead. And speak out loud. Call yourself by name out loud. Kimberly, you are God's beloved child. Remember your baptism. Be thankful. And know that the Holy Spirit is at work within you. I invite you to join in that baptismal blessing. And then I invite you for your shell word to choose a number. You should choose a number between 1 and 160. That's a whole huge range of numbers. <clears throat> choose one of those and stick to it. Write that number down on the piece of paper that you have. This is your number. Do not stray from it. You may take a moment, a deep breath in the spirit to think of that number. Ingrid will begin playing for us in a moment. And when she does, we will have slides with 40 words at a time, and they are numbered. You are not looking at all the words. You are simply looking for your number. So it'll be 1 through 40, 41 through 80, etc. We'll give you about 10 seconds with each slide. That's all you need to find a number. Derek did it in three. So we'll give you 10 seconds before we move on to the next slide. When you see your number, write that word down on your piece of paper or on your shell card. After you've received your word, spend some time breathing over it. In the year to come, soon, sooner rather than later, pray over it, 
ponder it. It's not a magic word, but it is a word that in cooperation with the Spirit and your Christian disciplines may give you some insight into this coming year and how you might grow and be transformed by the Spirit. So once again, Ingrid's going to play for us. She has a piece named Jesus Name Above All Names by Tom Keen. As she is playing, you are going to look for your numbered word, and then you are going to spend some time pondering it. Once the baptismal remembrance music uh, is over, the reflective music, we're going to go right into our hymn. It's a hymn of affirmation of God's love. And again, our lyrics for the hymn will be on the screen. So I invite you as you sing that to take it as an affirmation that you are God's beloved child, and with you, God is well pleased.
And all God's people say, Amen. Friends, if you did not get your word, there will be a list posted on our website later today, or you may, if you are able, put something in our comments, and Priscilla is here with a list of the words, and she will shoot you back your number, your word. So if you were not able to catch your number, please know that we'll still be able to get it to you. You can always call me tomorrow as well. This brings us to our time of the offering. You know how to get your offerings to the church, but it's worth saying again, you may mail them to the church or directly to our church treasurer, Gary Russell, or you may use the Give Now button on our website to make a one-time gift or a recurring gift for your ease. I, give you, I thank you for all the ways you have generously shared with the church over this past year and in the coming year. We are still receiving pledges. If you have not yet pledged and you wish to do so, please do so in the next week so that we can have a good idea of where we are with our finances for this coming year. Friends, the earth belongs to God, our creator. Every good thing is a gift from the Lord. So let us glorify God through the gifts of our lives and our financial resources. In response to God's goodness, we say together, thank you, O oh God, for the gifts that you give. Enable us to be good stewards of your abundance. And now for prayer together. This morning, our flowers are given by Dawn and Jerry Chamberlain in memory of loved ones. We hold in prayer this morning Camp Hill Presbyterian, also Christ United Methodist in our local churches. And just so you know, Christ United Methodist is the church with whom we partner in order to participate in a community meal. We are considering beginning a second one of those, perhaps here at Middle Spring, and so if you would like to participate in either of those meals, especially perhaps the one here at Middle Spring, please be in contact with Brad Vital, who is chair of our service ministry, or Warren Jones is our co-chair. Uh, Warren is getting up to speed, but Brad will be able to help you, and we would love for you to participate in those. Please also know that we're in prayer for uh, Rios de Agua Viva, Rivers of Living Water Presbyterian in Joya Quebracho, Honduras. So we give thanks for all of these churches for, and for their ministries in their communities. And joys to share with you this morning. Uh, my dad had eye surgery on Friday for uh, glaucoma to relieve pressure in his eye. And when I spoke with my parents yesterday, he was recovering well from that. And his visit in the morning showed that the pressure in his eye was indeed back in the normal range. He is still healing from the surgery. We hope that that will hold, but I thank all of you who have held him in prayer, and he seems to be healing well, so I give thanks for that. That's the only other joy I have. Are there any joys in our comments? Please feel free also to leave joys and concerns in our comments at this time. I'm going to invite us then uh, to hear the following concerns. Hopefully you have already heard, but on January 5th of this past week, Dick Weller passed from life here to life eternal. So please be in prayer for Shirley and uh, all of Dick's children, Wenda and her spouse Jeff, uh, Rick and Wes and Brenda and his spouse Brenda, uh, Wes and his spouse Brenda. Please be in prayer for Dick's brothers and sisters, uh, Joyce Russell and spouse Gary, who are members of this congregation, as well as Ken Weller and Judy, who are members. We have nieces and nephews of Dick's who belong to this congregation. So many in our community who knew him, were related to him, and loved him deeply. Be in prayer for them all. There will be a celebration of Dick's life on May 29th, and that was his birthday, and details will be coming about that. Please continue to hold his family in prayer, and we give, we give thanks for his faithful life and for his life lived among us here at Middle Spring. Please also be in prayer for Rodney Kelso. He's really had a roller coaster this week. Uh, he was put back on a ventilator during the week uh, because he began to suffer again the effects of COVID. He has been in ICU on a ventilator. His lungs are finally becoming clear, they did remove him from the ventilator, but um, I think my understanding is because of the ventilator, his windpipe is swollen, and so they had to put the ventilator back in 
They are now waiting for a consult from an ear, nose, and throat doctor to see what next steps might be. So, uh, so he is doing better, but he is still on a ventilator and still in need of our prayer, as are Jen and Austin and Alyssa, his family, um, the Hartmans, the McMullins, all of his family who are a part of this church. We hold Rodney in prayer for healing and his family in prayer for comfort and peace as they support him from afar. Please be in prayer for David Weir. Some of you may remember David. He used to live on Middle Spring Road, moved away, uh, and I understand that he was back in this area for the holiday celebrations, visiting family. While here, he also contracted COVID. I found out yes, Friday that he was in Chambersburg Hospital and last night that he's now been placed on a ventilator. He's been in Chambersburg Hospital, my understanding is, since before Christmas. So please be in prayer for David Weir. If you feel so inclined, send him a card at the hospital. We will trust that the dedicated nurses there will read him that card to give him encouragement. Uh, I hear from a friend of his that encouragement for David is needed. So prayer and prayer of encouragement for him. Please be in prayer for Francis Chamberlain. We've been praying for Francis's niece, Ruth Ann, who was diagnosed with ALS. Ruth Ann died this past week as well. So Francis, we... Our hearts go out to you and, and also to the rest of Ruth Ann's family, all of the Chamberlain family who are mourning her death. Jim and Jill Corwin ask for us to be in prayer for Jill's cousin David. He's on our long-term prayer list. David is now confined to a wheelchair, so prayer for peace for David. Please also be in prayer for the Corwin's granddaughter, Ryan. She is having ankle surgery this week to either repair or replace a torn tendon. The doctors will figure out what needs to happen uh, when they do the surgery. So prayer for successful surgery for their granddaughter, Ryan. Finally, please also hold Dave Hartman in prayer. Donna let me know this morning that he has another infection. He's being treated with antibiotics, but they will and will be seeking further medical care this coming week. So please be in prayer that this isn't the start of another round of, of infections for Dave. Are there any other concerns in the comments that people would share? Debbie Fletcher asks for prayers for strength and healing for the Flegel family and Brenda Pearson for strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You may continue to leave joys and concerns in our comments as we pray together. Let's pray. All glorious God, maker of heaven and earth, hear us as we bring to you our joys, but also our concerns for the world and those you have made. God, we do pray for the world. Move again over these troubled waters. We lift to you our, your creation. We lift to you our stewardship of your creation. And we ask that you will enable us to be good stores, stewards, that you will enable us to cease our careless ways, taking advantage of all of the good and beautiful gifts that you have given Lord, where carelessness in our creation brings chaos, restore order and goodness and life. God, we pray for the church which you have redeemed. Renew in us the gifts of your spirit and the call to Christian discipleship. Where history and heresy have divided us, make us one in the baptism we share, and enable each of your baptized children to fulfill their calling to live as Christ's disciples. God, we pray for the peoples which you have created. Give to the leaders of all nations the wisdom to know what is good, where people are poor and hungry. Provide justice and daily bread. May our hands be those through whom you reach out to the vulnerable, to the poor, and to the oppressed. God, we pray for loved ones you have given us. Bless our families, friends, and neighbors. Keep them safe from trouble and danger. 
where there is sorrow or sickness or suffering, send your spirit of comfort and healing. We lift to you now all of those we have named this morning who are in need of your healing mercy and also those whom we carry in our own hearts and minds. And we name them now, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. O oh God, for all of these, and for those known only to you, we ask your healing hand, your compassion, and your grace to be poured out upon them. God, we pray for all of those who are mourning today, for those who are mourning loss of life, for those who are mourning our division, for those who are longing for your kingdom come. Work in us each to instill that longing and to enable us to be your kingdom people. All this we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus, whose voice is our strength and salvation, whose breath is the spirit of peace. We pray also as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A few words for the week to send you out with. This is the last, last call for directory updates. We will be trying to put that together, hopefully this week. If you have not yet looked at your uh, directory information, please do so. If you desire to be considered part of the Middle Spring congregation and you are not in our directory, please send me a note through our website or through my email address, which is revkim at middlespringpc.org. I would love to hear from you. Also, we do have offering envelopes here at the church. Normally, you would just pick them up in our narthex. If you would like them, you may come to the church and get them or call Mary and she'll leave them on our back bench for you. Uh, we will mail them to you if you would like us to. It will save us some money if you come and pick them up, please. We do have permission to podcast and stream all the music in this service with our music licenses. So, friends, you are God's called and sent people. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe all these things with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And now, May the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be yours this day and evermore. Amen. <laughs>